which is in Chestnut, uh, Room in 3, Dr. Health and Wellness Center. Um, before I get into it, I just kind of want to hear what orgs you guys are treasurers uh, or treasurers in training for, because I just want to know. I'm curious. So, you guys can go in a room with your popcorn, it's really up to you. Don't hear say goodbye. <laughs> All right. Uh, UNICEF, UNT, Japanese Honor Society. Uh, AAA Computer Society. Faith Analysis, uh, Alumni Association. Uh, Filipino Student Association. Women's Rugby. Family Business Association. Okay. ASME. Chair of the Manage. Papa Delta Chi and Women's Cross. Arabic Language Association. What work are you trying to do? Oh, this ends now. All right. Okay. Um, so basically, ooh, I always go too fast. Um, this is kind of what we're going to be identifying as we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to be talking about the banking options um, for your uh, org of choice. But if you are going to be the one setting it up, we're going to talk about which one fits best for your org, and so on and so forth. Um, keeping track of your money, what that kind of entails, what that looks like. It's much different than your personal finances because it includes a lot more money than you guys probably have. Um, fundraising and then granting access to funds, treasures. Um, it's your choice uh, if you're the sole operator of the funds or if you have multiple cards or multiple people that have access to the funds um, and like the security things about that too. Um, and then we're going to be talking about uh, Stress treasure typically is one of the uh, more stress-related um, officer positions, um, just because it's money. Money talks about stress, uh, and then uh, planning and stress for your transition. So, getting training like a training manual. Um, did you guys have a training manual whenever you stepped up in the office? Did anyone have that given to you? Brand new org. Bummer, y'all. Bummer. Okay. Um, when I was a treasurer, they gave me a really big book, really scary big book, but it helped a lot. Um, okay, first of all, ethical banking. I'm sad I have to say this, but you should never, ever, ever have to uh, use this money, like your org's money, for your own personal stuff. Don't go grocery shopping and accidentally use the wrong card. Big deal. It's a big deal. Um, so um, be sure to keep, like if your org has a credit card or something, keep it in a separate spot. Then your personal credit cards or debit cards or whatever, that way there's zero chance of it getting mixed up um, because it's a lot of paperwork. Um, yeah. Oh, also, um, you can't buy illegal things because just don't. Like, because <laughs> your org will get in trouble and you get shut down by the school. Um, so that that should just be known. Um, so does anyone, does anyone know if they have a tax ID number for their org? Okay. A lot of you guys do. This does not mean that you're tax free, um, so or tax exempt. That's a different thing. Um, so don't assume that. Um, if you, I don't think any org is tax free. I'm not sure. If you have a national or state affiliate, some of those organizations are. Yeah. So talk to your org if they're tax free or not um, to your higher higher powers. Um, <laughs> but. Just basically, you don't want to get in trouble with the IRS, because that would suck. Um, okay, so this is the banking stuff. Who has debit cards for their org? Or, okay, who has checks? Who doesn't know? All right, okay, so um, we're going to talk about debit cards and checks are typically the two most used things for orgs. Um, Debit cards are, I mean, you guys all probably will have them. They're more convenient. Um, they process faster, and you can make online payments if your org needs that. Um, on the flip side of that are the negatives. Um, it's easy to overspend. Um, also, if you have multiple cards, you have to keep track of multiple people. And whenever we're making our budget, if you have multiple cards, you're having to go and ask that person, okay, what did you buy with that? And I have to put it in my budget and see where it all came down to. Um, so it's just a lot of you chasing numbers. Um, so I would recommend that you, if someone is using the card on your behalf, um, that you require receipts 
in like a detailed description of what they're using it for. Um, and then potential for misuse, I talked about that, about getting it confused with your personal card. Um, and then checks are, um, I mean, they're, I don't really use checks anymore, but um, they're the heart, like they're paper, so um, they're easily misplaced. Um, but you do get like instant copy of what it was made. Um, it's typically only kept with one individual because it's like a paper copy, and you use a checkbook and you have to balance it and whatever. Um, and you're able to look at your money more. Um, and then cons. Um, do you, have you guys ever used to check? I don't know. Um, you have to have your like driver's license whenever you're buying stuff, and so you have to make sure that you're the account holder and not like the previous treasurer, because they'll be like, oh, this is not in your name. Um, it takes longer to process, which checks. Um, they're not accepted everywhere, and sometimes depending on the org, you have to get like your signature and the president's signature, um, so it just takes longer. Um, okay, do you guys have any question about banking? That was kind of the banking spiel. It was pretty fast. Yes? So my organization is brand new. We actually were just approved by the university like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm basically kind of setting this all up myself. Yeah. Um, when deciding on this, how, so we're really not really, we don't have much money to take care of yet. We're going to start mm -hmm. collecting dues probably next week, but it's probably only going to be like cash. a couple hundred dollars and it's going to be cash. Okay. Um, do you have any recommendations on like when setting up these systems, kind of some things to avoid, some things to keep in um, mind? For cash, that uh, I would definitely keep a ledger um, if you're handling cash just because you need to have a, like what's coming in, who it's from, um, and then for cash, I would, you'd be the only person that has the cash. Like that would be a very strict like limit for me of, I have the cash and no one else does. Um, just because confusion of personal funds is like even higher when it's cash. Um, and then once you reach a, I would research um, banks and see like what the uh, minimum for a checking account is. And so um, build up your, your cash enough to get a minimum and then open a bank account. Um, so, because I mean, you're obviously not going to have one if you have no money, um, but as soon as possible, getting your money into a bank instead of it being in a drawer in your desk at home, like just safety. Um, and then if you want to go into specifics about how to set up a bank account for your org, um, we do, uh, or coaching sessions at the S at Student Money Management Center, and so you and like your president could come in and meet with a uh, coach, a coach, bleh, coacher, um, a coach who will go through your specific org stuff that you want to talk about, and like which bank is best, what about interest rates, blah, 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 like all that stuff. Um, so, but like build up enough to where you can open up a bank account is basically where I go from there. Yes. <laughs> So my organization has an account through Wells Fargo, mm -hmm. and they have a limit of $500. If you have less than that, they would charge you a fee. Monthly. Yeah. Um, should we decide on getting, can we go ahead and just get another bank account, or? To, uh, like one that doesn't charge a fee, is what yes. you're asking? Um, Uh, if you think that's best, yeah. Um, I, I would do a ton of research before I drop my bank account, though. Do you have any recommended banks that you know of? We have a list in student activities of ones that we've yeah. looked up recently. Um, and I don't think it's updated on our website yet because we just got a new, you and he just got the new website. Um, but I'll be adding that on. And if anyone wants, to get my email after this, I can send you, the, we do have the updated one where it compares different banks. Um, and like you said, the minimum amount that you'd have to have, we have all that information kind of in a table. Mm -hmm. So we can send you that. Yeah. Can that be lower? Than 500? Yeah. 
I think that's a Wells Fargo standard. Standard, yes. But they do have another type of account that is an option at Wells Fargo. I can't recall. Oh, I think I know what it is. Do you know what that is? Okay. Um, it's like you don't have to have. There's no, there's no minimum. Like each month you have to do ten swipes. And that's what I have right now. Mm -hmm. And they're very flexible because they said, um, let's say you build up five hundred dollars or like more, you can switch bank accounts without getting canceled. Okay. So because like we host events a lot and. We'll buy like pizza for our members. So what we do is like, can we have ten pizzas? Like have it like each individual. Yeah. yeah, that's what we do. So you could look into that of the ten swipes thing if you're wanting to have like a bank account immediately. Yeah. And then we also have Wells Fargo, and I think with the the fee is if you have to transfer, you transfer from your checking to your savings. So every month I just have it set up that twenty five dollars gets transferred every month, and we don't get charged. Anymore. So it might be that. So. Yeah, because I mean, I know that it was um, deactivated <coughs> because our previous officers didn't do much. And so when we got it, it was um, you know, dormant, I think is what the term is. And then they made us uh, to, you know, withdraw a dollar and deposit it back mm -hmm. to activate it back. And then they just told us that because we were under the limit or minimum that we'd be charged a fee if we didn't go over 500 or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, I'd look into the 10 swipe thing if that was something that's interesting to you, or you can pursue what Callie said and look into other banks. Um, it I is nice, Wells Fargo is here, so yeah. it is nice to have them here and in the union and you can access them at any time and they work with student organizations a lot. Um, so I would just contact them and, you know, ask them if is there a better option for us based on how much money we usually have in our account and how much we're usually taking out or putting in at, a, you know, each month. Because mm -hmm. um, they are familiar with working with student organizations, obviously, so that's a bonus. Yeah. And I think having a minimum of account amount is pretty normal. So you were asking, like, do I know of any banks? I'm like... Well, yeah, I mean, there's I mean, probably one or two, but it's pretty normal to have I know my bank's set up to where it's like $5 and so it's not crazy. And then, I mean, I, I was just wondering if there was, because I think ours is a business account or something. Mm -hmm. So it has that $500 minimum. Yeah. But, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, just call, call Wells Fargo and say, or go in person and say, like, what's our best option here? Okay. And they, since they work with student arts, they're going to, more willing to talk to you about that kind of stuff. Um, do you have any other questions about banking? Not? All right. Um, okay. Um, so who has bylaws and constitutions for their org? Okay. Um, so just make sure that as treasurer, you know it. You know in advance what your role is and like who has uh, access to the funds. That's kind of making it have very clear boundaries. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about organization budget, um, having a handbook, and then training and transition plans. If you don't have a training handbook, I strongly recommend you making one, um, just because it'll benefit your organ in the long run and. Um, It'll make you training your predecessor a lot easier um, and less stressful. Um, okay, basic budgeting 101. Income minus expenses. <laughs> um, you want to be at either zero or green, uh, or in the in the black, I guess, is the technical accounting terms or whatever. I'm a counselor, I'm not an accountant, I don't know. Um, and then red means you're You've spent, you've spent too much and you don't ever want to be there. Um, so there are different budget types. Um, you can have, based on your org's needs, you can have a general budget that encompasses everything you do as an org. You can have an officer budget if you are maybe a bigger org and say the president has responsibilities, the VP has responsibilities, and they all need budgets to accomplish what they need. You can break it up into officer. Or you could break them into events if you so choose to. Um, and then we're kind of going to go over a example budget. Um, so your income. This is a very generalized thing. Um, dues are very 
typical income that all student owners have. Um, you guys can have fundraisers, that's how you get money. We'll talk about fundraisers and like the 101s of that. Um, and then donations, if you have, uh, if you're like a chapter of like a national org or whatever, um, having alumni or whatever, uh, you can have donations coming in. Those, do you guys have any other areas of income that you would like to add to my list? How about um, the scholarships that UNT offers, such as the uh, well paid, uh, the well paid travel uh, scholarship and the Eagle Nest funding? Yeah, okay, so if you guys get scholarships or grant for your orgs, that could be on there too. Um, I can't remember where to apply for those on. Um, but we'll figure that out later. Um, and expenses, okay, so this is where it gets pretty detailed. Um, so uh, office supplies, uh, if your org needs that. Um, marketing costs, so like if you're gonna plan out flyers or lawn signs, or if you have a um, advanced account on Hootsuite, like, uh, a premium account, like that kind of stuff is an expense. Um, so this, you can either choose to break it up into, for the next step, you can choose to break it up via, a, like by per event, or you can do it as a whole for the year. Yeah. So could we budget in um, unexpected expenses that might just arise? Yeah. Emergency fund, yeah. That can be in there. Um, so food, that's a pretty typical student org expense. Um, rentals, um, literally anything that you can rent. Um, publicity, which kind of goes with marketing, but could be more specific to the event if you want to make it more specific. Um, equipment, and then if your student org does professional development, um, registration fees for going to a, like traveling it for events, um, Travel, food, lodge, and then like resources if you have subscriptions or books or anything you really buy, professional trainings. Um, and then, so this one you can break up per event or in, for professional development per each professional training that you're going to. Um, or, and this is, this is an um, general budget. So you can do an officer budget where it's the VP, blah, 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 and then they each have all of these things. Um, I, it's really up to you. When I was a treasurer, I chose to do general and event um, because officer meant that I had to check in on everyone and I felt like a babysitter. Um, but that's at your discretion. Um, and then, so you're going to total each of these categories and then put it into an income expense and then total in blank. Is it a negative or is it a positive? Um, and basically budgeting is really just like collecting receipts, making sure you know what things are going to, you can put it in the right spot. Um, and then did you guys get information about past the past year's expenses? have that, it's wonderful because then you can make a model budget based on what you spent last year. If you don't, um, congrats, you get to create it. And uh, um, you can do um, quarterly reviews of it to see if you're managing it. So I would make a budget now and then check it in December after the semester's over and say, hey, did we have a surplus of money to where we can do more fun things next semester? or where we like barely scraping by, maybe I need to budget in a little bit more room. Um, so, but you get to create that, so up to your discretion. <laughs> um, do you guys have any questions about budgeting? It's kind of like managing your personal stuff, just way more detailed. Um, okay, fundraising. Man, do I hate uh, fundraising. So, um, when you start to fundraise, the first thing you need to do is define a need and a purpose. Because when you report it to the student uh, or the SAC, you're going to need to say, here's what we're trying to raise funding for, instead of just saying, we just need money. That's going to be very specific. Um, how much you're going to need to know how much your money is going, or how much you're going to need. 
Um, that way you have a goal. Um, include if your members are going to be doing a lot of work for it. Um, include that in your budget um, or in your proposal. And then um, go to the student activities office and talk to them about what fundraising looks like at UNT um, because there's policies that I don't know. So you need to abide by those policies, <laughs> basically. Um, and then fundraise according to mission. That way when you're going at people on um, at the library mall and you're saying, hey, we're raising money for our org, and they say, why? <coughs> they have a reason. Because just saying, because, because, I don't want to say you're I don't want to say you're right early, but um, do you have any questions about fundraising? Yeah. So the SAC office is where we go for the policies? Policies, yeah. We have the fundraising policy on our resources page online. So you can just access that and that gives you some ideas um, of what to do um, and just some guidelines to follow. And that's the student money management. Yeah. On the student activities website. Student activities, yeah. Yep, and then it will be under the student orgs. Um, there's a program and services tab and it will be student organizations and then it's under the resources tab and it's actually, it might be under the money matters section. Stress fee money management. Um, so, if you're not a brand new org, um, do more than one. Does more than one person have access to you guys' accounts? Okay. Um, so, that's okay, but make sure you know who those people are. Um, also, make sure to take off the formal people, the former officers' names from the like who, who's in charge of this and like uh, signature signature promises or that's not the right word. Basically who can sign for stuff, make sure the old officers aren't included on it. That way there's no chance of anything terrible happening down the line. Um, so do you guys have multiple debit cards? Okay, um, if you do have multiple debit cards, make sure that you know who has them where they are at all times, and um, yeah, I, it's, I mean, it's best for like your own personal stress to only have one, but it's kind of not realistic if you have multiple people and your org is big enough. Um, like I was a sorority treasurer and like that, our org was huge, and so it, I couldn't do all the spending because that was just unrealistic. Um, but make sure you know, um, Make sure they get receipts and bring them back to you and not like them away because those are important later. Um, maintain current files on your org's finances um, because when you have to do taxes and stuff, if you have to do taxes and stuff, um, you have to have files to do that. <laughs> um, so consider um, creating purchase approval forms. Um, that way you're aware of all of the expenses that are happening. You may not be the one doing them, um, but like let's say the vice president needs something for Rush, um, or needs multiple things, you can have like a purchase uh, request and they say, oh I need this, it's gonna cost about this much, I need this, da da da. And that way you're aware of all of the expenses that are happening. And it's um, also that way you're the other officers don't just like go on a spending spree in Walmart and say, I needed actually all of this, and when then they probably did. Um, that way it's just making them accountable for their purchases as well. Um, and then cash and checks should be deposited within 24 hours of receiving. So if you have the ledger, you're writing down stuff 24, like within 24 hours, make sure that you're not losing the monies. Because if you lose the monies, issues. Um, do you guys have any questions about this? Yeah? What if you don't have um, a bank account yet, but you already have cash, like where do you put it in? And how, and how much should I save before opening a bank account? So, I love bank accounts because I know monies are always safe mm -hmm. in the bank. 
I am a very worry person, and so having money in my in my bedroom is just like absolutely terrifying for me. Um, like <laughs> the stress. Um, so you, if you, um, I recommend getting a bank account as fast as possible. Um, and so if that ten swipe thing would work for your work. Um, but if you don't have, that doesn't work out for you for some, for some reason or another, um, I would invest in safe, um, that's kept at a place that, you know, that, that will be safe, like, I don't know, your shoe drawer or scarf drawer, I don't know. Um, that way, that way it's like in an enclosed spot that you know. I'm just really worried that someone will break into your apartment and you'll lose all the money. And then, holy crap, what the heck are you going to do next? Um, so I, I would invest in safe that's within your means. Not like one of those Fuse Academy ones that are like absolutely insane, but like a decent safe. Um, but bank accounts are preferable because cash is terrifying. Yeah. So we're running into the problem of having multiple names on the account. Mm -hmm. of previous officers yeah um, just because it was poorly run before we got a hold of it and um, so what would you like advise for as far as paperwork to take in um because right now the president has access mm -hmm. but i don't and you don't have access else, to the monies i don't bummer he does you're a treasurer <laughs> i know um so you're at wells fargo right yes i would go in person with the president because um, they obviously have signing privileges and the president will make the cut of choosing to say this person does not have access anymore out this person out you in like that way you go in person to the bank and I think you have like IDs and stuff to yeah. you can actually transfer. fill out a form on org sync under student activities portal um, it's called the checking verification checking verification form checking authorization something like that mm -hmm. um, and you actually can fill that out and say we need these officers added and these officers removed. Um, the people that are being added do have to be officers listed in your org sync profile. Your president and your advisor do need to approve that. Um, but then we will send you a PDF letter that you can take directly to your bank. Yes. Yeah, you have to take that letter because okay. yep. you have to fill that out and take that letter or else they can't do anything because it's not in writing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it has to be the names that are on there have to be the one, like it has to be the people that are Yep. So if you're listing, if you want to add four people, all four of those people need to go at one time to do it. Or as else you need a new letter. <laughs> as far as the people that are like being taken off, do we need their names as well on that letter? Or can we just say that once we're there? That's, the scratch that's, over. that's all information you have to fill out in the form and we'll put into the letter that we create for you. Okay. Do you not know their names or something? I don't know their names. I mean, I have to talk to the president. But okay. I mean, I know the president's name and my name, obviously, so I know that you need us to, but like, I don't know what, because there's offices on there from like three or four years ago, and it changes every year. Do you have the same advisor? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because okay. I think they changed with the faculty um, advisors and stuff changing. We may, we may still have old documentation, so you can, I would con just contact us if you need more information. Yeah. When I go to set up this bank account, who all would you recommend putting on the list of people who can sign? Me, just me and the president? Or maybe me and the president and the vice president? Or who all would you recommend? Maybe even just me? Like, what is the best route? How many people are you at work? Um, right now, we've got about 15, but we're about to take it to MSA and say, hey, come join, and we're expecting at least half, if not most, of them. Okay. So it's going to um, be a, a, a how decent How many amount. purchases? I would for sure say you and the president, um, including others past that, um, really just depends on if you think you can handle uh, making all the purchases. Um, mm -hmm. But I tend to go on the air, the side of less people, the better. Okay. So. But you would recommend me and the president both being there. Yeah. Okay. I would suggest your advisor as well. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because I know for my organization, on the account is me, the president, and the vice president, but the vice president doesn't have a card. All she can do is look at the account. Mm -hmm. So that way it's just someone else to check some balances. To like to check the balances and keep us in line also to be like, um, well, because she's more in charge of the committees, so mm -hmm. she turns in the budgets. So she knows how much they're supposed to spend. Mm -hmm. So if they see that we spent more, she can bring that up. Yeah. So it's someone just to keep us in line. Mm -hmm. It really just depends on what your what your officers do, because um, it sounds like that really fits well for their vice president. Um, but if your vice president is not in charge of anything related to finances, then maybe? So maybe our program coordinators, because we have two people that are like social chairs that do all of our programming. Do you recommend them as the can see it? Or just have them get with me if they need anything or if they want to see anything? Um, there's two. I mean, well, that's something better to talk because I'm that's definitely going to do the personal coaching thing. Yeah, I think I think that's that would be day. something you would need to discuss together. Like, do they want that responsibility, or um, do they want to report to you? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's something you should talk about collectively. And then, yeah, if you're scheduling a coaching session, then talk about that too. So, any other questions? All right. Okay, um, these are just general tips. I hope you guys enjoy my Monopoly theme. I was being extra creative when I made this. Um, okay, um, so receipts should be given um, for all money collected by the org. So if you're doing dues, if you're doing electronically, you send an email back that says like, congrats, you paid your dues. Um, and if you're doing check, cash, um, just maybe having like a generalized form that just kind of has their name that says you've paid your money. Um, that way you're going to be okay in the long run. Um, require prior purchase approval. Um, that's kind of the same thing. So that way someone doesn't go crazy with a card and go over budget. Make sure they list like all the things that they're going to pur purchase and the amounts they're hoping to be around. I mean, you don't have to go to like some 99 cents or anything, but a generalized number. Um, that way you're, if you have multiple cards, like you're always aware of what is happening um, with the money. Um, if, you have, like, if you have like national dues or any sort of financial obligations, you have to make sure to pay those ASAP. Um, that way you're not in like the last hour in trouble. Um, that's a lot of stress. Um, so maintaining good financial records in detail for your org's banking procedure. Basically, I hope you all love Excel. You're going to be living with it for the rest of your life. Um, uh, so just including uh, when you make your budget, like you're going to be adding items and like subtracting it out. Um, saying like, on this date, we spent blah, 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 or da, da, da. Um, and like updating that. I mean, don't do it every day. Like you'll have no life. but like. Um, maybe weekly, or um, if it's a full <coughs> season, maybe bi bi-monthly, uh, or two times a month, that's what I was going for. Um, not every two months, that's a um, But making sure that you're updating your files, that way you don't get to the end of the semester and you're like, I have all these receipts. Crap, because that's just too much stress and a lot of work. And you want to have a great Christmas and not like spend it on an Excel file. Um, and then regularly report financial details to leadership every semester uh, or throughout the semester. Um, and then if you are a part of a national organization, sometimes you have to report to like state or nationals um, that what you're spending your money on, stuff like that. Um, but so have a meeting with all of your officers and sit down and say like, okay, this was our budget, this is what we spent. Um, talk, talk about money, it's kind of a taboo thing that no one wants to talk about, they all wanna like, shift the responsibility to the treasurer, but talk about it and say like, hey, like if you went over, talk about that and say, okay, we went over, this is an issue, let's not do it again. Like here's where we should make cuts um, that I'm recommending, what are your guys' thoughts about that? That way it's not just like 
you're making all the cuts, you're including them in it, we'll be more on board if you're including them in the process, basically. Um, and if dues go up, life is just hard. Um, do you have any questions about those? About dues or about what you just said? Mm -hmm. I'll leave them. I have questions in general. We're almost at the end of my presentation, so after that, popcorn questions. I think I'm good for now. Okay. Um, transition planning. So, I, I'm writing remembering that no one had um, a handbook that they inherited, right? Okay. Um, so, to make your job easier, whenever you're training a person to have your job in the long run, um, I would recommend making a large binder about what you do to be a treasurer. Um, that way, whenever you're training them, it's not like you scrambling and you're forgetting you're going to forget something and then you're stressed later. Um, maybe like at the end of each month, um, say this is what I did this month as a tre as treasurer. Um, and then at the end, when you're nearing the end of your officer title position, um, make a collective uh, handbook about like budgeting, about uh, the signing things and changing and include, including the form even. Um, and the, uh, basically all the stuff you do with the treasurer. Because we recommend that <clears throat> you start training your new treasurer with like a month or two uh, when you're both there. Um, that way <coughs> there's less chance for mess ups in the long run. Um, your financial record should be up to date whenever you're leaving. Um, that way you're not saying, oh, I forgot to do all of this. Here you go, person that doesn't really know what they're doing. Bad call. And if you inherited that, I'm sorry. Uh, so signature your authority to be current. Um, and you could even go with the new treasurer and say, like, this is how you do this. Da -da -da. Um, and then another officer typically the president, um, should sign off an audit um, organization's financial statements every semester. So that's kind of what I was talking about, like sitting down with people and talking about it, and then having all the, like one or two officers sign saying, we accept whatever you just told us. That way, get into writing, basically. Do you have any questions about that? Yes. So in the constitution for my org, we have where new officers, there's an election at the beginning of the spring, and they spend the entire spring semester kind of like shadowing us in training. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's too much, or is that like a good idea? I or mean, should we kind of keep it to like one or two months? I, uh, I mean, I personally believe that more training is better, but uh, depends on how many. I don't know. I've, I've always heard two to one to two months is typical. So a semester may be a little bit excessive, um, but if you guys feel more comfortable with more time, by all means, like, that's fine. But one to two months is typical. If you go any less than that, then it's a little crazy. Um, okay, so your next steps. Um, make sure that your signature signature stuff is up to date and that you have access to the accounts as a treasurer because if you don't have access then like what are you doing um, uh, da, 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 da. make sure that um, the person before you well, was ethical in their banking practices um, because you want to be aware if they weren't that way it doesn't look like it was you um, review and create an organization budget so, like that general one we talked about, um, at SMMC we have like budgeting worksheets that are basically Excel, Excel spreadsheets. Um, so if you need one, um, I'll get your email and I can just send them to you. Um, and then review or create treasure training transition plans. And then if you need help, um, come talk to SMMC. We do um, treasure like org trainings all the time, um, and like j specific meetings particular to you guys. So that's 
because this is a very general one. So if you have like personal issues, we can, they're not personal, but like org specific issues. If you have personal issues, that's a whole different department. Uh, um, uh, da, 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 da. But this is kind of what we do. It's budget development, budget review, bylaws reviews, treasurer training, or treasurer document review, financial organization, financial planning. So those are kind of what we offer for our services. So do you guys have any specific questions that were not addressed on the PowerPoint that I just went over? Yeah? Is there any questions? What are y'all's hours that you are available, like, when I go in to make the, because I'm probably going to end up making the appointment by myself, but I need to figure out when my president is free and when I'm free when y'all are open. Eight so is five. it just like eight to five? Eight to five. Yeah. And we have people there from eight to five that will talk to anyone. So 